So we're talking about Escada sentiment, right? And um, just get a kind of a look at the bottle here. It is a really cool bottle, right? And this is a um, sort of a heart shape that we got going on here, right? And um, got the writing on the front there, embossed on there. Obviously, without this flashlight, it's not very camera worthy. Maybe you can kind of see it in the glare a little bit, right? But like this, ooh, wow, sexy, right? So this one, um, you can tell, okay, a little bit darker. This is a darker fragrance. This is more along the amber sides of things. But I, what I want to say is just what a great atomizer, okay? So wham, okay? That was from pretty far away. Wham, okay. You can see the effect of the atomizer. So do one up here so we can see how solid that atomizer is on this bottle. Okay. One more for good luck. Okay. This guy, uh, this is going to give you a punch. One, two of, I want to say red apple. That's what it makes you think of. The top note is, you know, technically uh, juniper berry and lime. So, all right. You know, those of you that are around a lot of juniper trees, you'll probably think of juniper berry. But for the rest of mankind, we're going to think of, you know, red apples. That's what that smells like. But I almost want to say this is a gourmand because of how much of a red apple punch you get right in the face right away, right? And that's the top note. Bam. A little bit of lime, maybe. If this is going to remind you of a drink, then based on that technical top notes, I'm going to say you know, gin and soda was my go-to. But, you know, if you're a gin and tonic person, I was there at one point, too. I understand. But either way, you're usually going to have a lime garnished in there, right? So this is kind of a, you know, one that can go along a signature set and go along with your signature drink, you know, if that happens to be your thing. Um, after you get through that apple, juniper berry, lime, top note, all right, then you're going to have a dry down of... I sprayed some earlier, so I can tell you I've got patchouli. I've got some sandalwood. I've got some amber in there. A little bit of vetiver. And I feel like every fragrance has that for men. It's like if you don't have at least, you know, something like all of those, you're not a complete men's fragrance these days, um, ex with the exception of like some aquatics. Um, this is projection, solid projection, you know, not very far, like two foot projection, but within that projection, it's, it's strong. And this is such a gourmand light fruit, like red, red apple smelling fragrance that it's not off putting. You can't overspray this. Okay. Uh, maybe a go chocolate gourmand or, or like a bourbon gourmand, you gourmand, uh, spray, you can overspray that for sure. A tobacco, I've heard you definitely overspray that. This juniper berry, I don't think you can overspray this. Um, and because when I thought that I've oversprayed it, people like literally, like I find women's head on my shoulders telling me how great this smells. So, or how great, obviously, I smell. But it's this that smells like that. Me, I smell like, you know, a human being. And, uh, yeah, longevity, mm, four or five hours on this great one for the office. I have, you know, I tend to wear this one out at night in the fall and the winter. You can wear this one all day or, or night, fall and winter, spring, summer. I would reserve this one for nighttime. There's a lot better ones in the daytime for spring and summer. Um, mm, like I said, if your if your signature drink is a gin and uh, tonic or gin and soda or uh, you know a, 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 a Tom Collins, you know this is going to be those top notes are going to be right there. So you can boom spray this, go out, have that drink, and your top notes are matching your drink. Then the dry down give you that masculine right out. Um, yeah, very underrated. You can get this test for 30, 40 bucks. Comes with the cap, which testers, 
not a guarantee that it'll come with a cap. Actually, I'll get, most of the time, uh, you know, you won't get a cap. Um, but this one does. And why? Because, like I said before, when I worked in Sephora in early 2000s, late 90s, um, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that no, that was that was early 2000s. So when I worked in uh, Sephora early 2000s, uh, this had just come out. This had just come out, and at the time, Escada Magnetism was all the rage, and um, yeah, it's a very different. I would say it's almost a gourmand too, but that one's more of a green apple. That one's more of a candy sour, f candy fruit uh, smell, and that one more tropical. That one, um, like I said, that one's more for women. Uh, that one is kind of magnetism like that. That's a, that's a great women one. Like I said before, it reminds me of Lolita Lempica. This one, this one is not. This one is more um, on the sweeter side of things. No sourness. No, none of that tropical. No, this is sweet, and it and and. I pause when I say that because man, my mouth waters. Like it makes you wanna, it makes you wanna take a bite of this stuff. Um, like I said, 30, 40 bucks, great pickup. Should you buy it? Yes, I think everyone, every man should have this in this collection. Now, of course, if you already have Creed Aventus and other amazing height beasts that are super expensive, okay, stick with those. You know, I'm not gonna try and steer you otherwise. But if you don't want to spend three, four hundred bucks on Creative Ventus and you want to get a designer for it's not a clone, because this is not a clone, then this is your guy right here. It's got a sentiment. And um, bam. You can get this on uh, Fragrance Net, uh, Perfume Empire. Pretty much everybody has it. Um, and anyway, like I said, early 2000s, uh, I worked there so far. And this was just not, because of Scotta Magnetism, uh, was so popular this kind of and then and then the other uh, designer houses came out with such popular um, such in, it, it turned out to be influential fragrances in the fragrance world then this uh, this guy just kind of um, you know it's like Donnie Darko what a great movie um, came out right after 9-11 so you know no one wanted to watch it in the theaters. Everyone was busy and too scared probably to go to the theaters. Um, <clears throat> but a call classic nonetheless, right? So it's kind of become a niche fragrance because of that. Um, we always had testers, like I said, left over from this. Always had the cap on it because usually the cap, if the tester didn't have a cap, it's because it got used so much, right? Testing, oh, let me test this, let me test that. And customers even grabbing the tester and testing, uh, spraying test, uh, test strips with it. And, you know, this this didn't go experience that same uh, situation. And neither did um, Michael for Men, uh, unfortunately. Another call classic fell by the wayside, um, which actually got discontinued. And this got discontinued as well. This is a discontinued fragrance, um, which means that Eventually, this will become very mm, hard to find and then will become more expensive as the supply dwindles, right? Right now, how's that supply? Supply is good. 30, 40 bucks for a bottle. Supply is good right now. But I would say, you know, you can't stack fragrances because after two years, allegedly they go bad. But, um, you know, I would say this is a good one to have in your collection. Anyway, this has been... Nick the Nose, thank you for your time.